But let me tell you, one of those scariest things that you and I all have to think about is when we stand in front of Allah and we have to explain to Allah why the gift of La ilaha illallah that was given to you, that was given to me, the gift of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that could, we could so easily have planted inside the hearts of our growing generation. We failed to do it because we were too busy with other things, too busy with other things, so that two generations down the road, one generation down the road, there's nobody left to say, La ilaha illallah. We're going to have to answer Allah for that one. فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدْ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ A long period passed, their hearts became hard, most of them are corrupt. That's why I want to share these ayat with you. This concern is real. Don't think, everybody thinks their own family is immune. Their family is safe. If anybody had a right to think that their family is safe, it would have been Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam could say, I raised my kids properly. <laughs> and he did. His kid is so willing to submit to Allah, if al ya abat if al ma tu'mar. Do whatever you've been told. If Allah is telling you to cut my neck, cut it, ya, my father, it's okay. It's for the sake of Allah. فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ When they both submitted and he put his head down. And even that father, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he's so worried about his kids, he turns to Allah and says, وَجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَّا أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ I am shocked at these words. فَلَمْ يَقُلْ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامْ وَجْنُبْنِي وَذُرِّيَّتِي وَجْنُبْنِي وَذُرِّيَّتِي أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ لا وَجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَّا أَنْ and keep my sons from worshipping idols. If he said dhurriyati, it would have meant keep me and my children and their grandchildren and their grandchildren and their grandchildren from worshipping idols. He's not even thinking that far. He's worried that himself and his own kids, even after they've come to Islam, Ya Allah, that does not mean we're safe. You're the only one who keeps us safe. Keep us from falling into the worship of idols. رَبِّ إِنَّهُنَّ أَضْلَلْنَا كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ I'm shocked at that dua. I'm just absolutely shocked. That's the house that he built. That's the house that he built with his son. And he comes back and it's this thriving city where everybody worships Allah. And he's still worried that, Ya Allah, keep me and my children from worshipping idols. From falling into that. So now, the last thing I want to share with you, just about our kids, just to think about how Islam has to become a conscious thing, not just some practices. Not just we used to go to Jumu'ah. It can't, that's not going to be enough, I'm telling you now. You might be offended by what I'm saying, but that's okay. I'd rather you get offended and choose, do something than not. For your own selves, for your own families. You know, this, is, this is our matter. Every, every, every child that falls into doubt, every child that cares more about video games than they care about Allah's book, you know, that's our loss. What I want to tell you about is idols. Ibrahim salam was worried about idols. We don't have that problem. There's no statue over here. There's no cross over here. We're not worried about our kids falling into the worship of idols, but you need to understand what idols are, what a sanam is. Every generation has its own idols. Every era has its own idols. Our idols today, by the way, an idol is something you worship, something your hopes are associated with, something you think about all the time, something that replaces the place of Allah in your heart. That's an idol. And very easily in our times, technology can become an idol. Very easily in our times, money can become somebody's idol that they worship. All they care about is money. All they care about is looks. All they care about is the gadget. You know? People are crying. People are crying because they can't make hajj. And now you have people crying because they don't have the iPhone 6 Plus. You know? They're having a spiritual crisis because they don't have that video game. You know, I only have a PS3, I don't have a PS4. You know, they're crying, our kids are like bawling tears over this stuff. What's, what have we done? We are creating idols for our children. They're innocent. What you put in front of them, they will become obsessed with. And then you cannot blame them for their obsession. I'm not saying you don't, I mean, you know, my kids play games, I play games with them. They do. But there's a balance that has to be achieved. You're not, your job is not just there to just give your kids these luxuries in life and nothing else. Then these things will become their idol. This is all they will worship. This is all their life will amount to. You know, I, how many times I hear stories about teenage Muslim boys and girls. Teenage kids, I don't believe in God. Leave me alone, I just want to play my video games. Leave me alone. 
And those two things are not unrelated. That God got replaced with another God. That's what happened. When you're gaming eight hours, ten hours a day, you know? But we think, oh, well, Muslim, at least we go pray Jum'ah. At least we do something at Eid. We make some pakore at Eid. So we should be fine. This is, وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَإِن تُطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَا يَلِتْكُمْ مِنْ أَعْمَالِكُمْ شَيْئًا If you continue to obey Allah and His Messenger, none of your deeds will be wasted away.